Hello everybody, welcome to Altium Academy. I'm your host, Zach Peterson, and today we're gonna to be looking at power sequencers and all the different ways that you can sequence power across multiple rails in a PCB. Now this came from a viewer question on one of our older videos and not all boards will need power sequencing, but some of them do, especially if you have digital or analog components that operate with multiple voltage rails in a single package. So we're gonna look at some example components from Octopart and then we're gonna see how these are implemented and how they work. Make sure to follow along and let's get started. So we received a viewer question on one of our earlier videos asking about power sequencers and asking for an overview of power sequencers. So what is a power sequencer? Well, in the simplest sense, a power sequencer just sequences power being applied to different rails in your PCB. So essentially, if you have a processor that has multiple power rails on it, such as 3v3, 1v8, 1v2, and so on, you can power them on in a specific order if you like, and you would do this with a power sequencer sequencer IC. If you look at one of our old projects with the power amplifier, that amplifier actually required power sequencing on it, and you could do it manually, and on that type of component, it may be desirable to do it manually. But in many systems where you have multiple rails, they do need to be sequenced up in a specific order. Let's hop on to Octopart and take a look at some different types of power sequencer ICs. So I'm on Octopart now, and if I just search for power sequencer, we're gonna see a whole lot of results here from different manufacturers. I'm just gonna jump into this Maxim, or now analog devices components. This is the Max component. This is really a simple power sequencer. Basically, what this power sequencer is doing is it's going to turn on one of the rails after a different rail turns on. And so power sequencers can do this in a number of ways. What they can do is they can monitor one rail and then once that one rail comes up, they can enable power over to another rail. And that's exactly what this uh, component is doing. So here, if we look at the typical operating circuit, we can see here that we have two supplies that are being given or being enabled by this component. And essentially the way this component is doing this is it is using a gate driver with a FET to then supply that secondary supply over to whatever other components need that secondary supply. And so this is a pretty simple type of component that basically monitors the primary rail at 3.3 volts. And then once that primary rail comes up above a certain threshold, it can then turn on the second supply by toggling this gate. The way we do this is we then set a threshold here. This threshold is set using this resistor divider network. The resistor dividers are just chosen based on the primary supply. Once the primary supply rises above that threshold, then it's gonna to toggle this gate. You'll also see here that you have an enable pin. So enable pins are another way that you can use power sequencing, and you can actually use enable pins on all of your regulators without actually implementing a power sequencer integrated circuit. So I'm gonna show you how to do that here later in the video. But basically what this is gonna do is this enable pin can be turned off and when you turn that enable pin off or toggle it low, then it doesn't matter what the primary supply does, it won't turn on the secondary supply. So that's another way that this can be used. So once you turn on the enable pin or bring it high, then it will allow the secondary supply to toggle, and then you can bring that power over to the dual supply area in this diagram. Now, if we have a power sequencer IC that's based on sensing one of the rails and then waiting until that rail rises above a threshold, how do we know how high that rail has to get in order to toggle the secondary rail? To see that, what we can do is go down and look at that set pin because that set pin is gonna tell you what the threshold is. And that threshold is right here. It's between 0.602 volts and 0.634 volts with a nominal value of 0.618 volts or 618 millivolts. So what this does is it has a reference voltage internal to the chip that is then used to set that threshold. And it's basically like a comparator. Once the supply voltage on the primary rail rises above this value, and it's sensing that value based on a voltage divider that you put in that circuit, then it's gonna to toggle that gate. Now, when the gate goes to turn on, there's actually a delay between the toggle time and the turn on time. So take a look at this graph. This graph just shows you, as an example, the gate's turn off time but you have the same type of effect for the turn on time. And it really depends on the capacitance that's connected to the load. Even once the set voltage goes below its threshold and drops low, you'll then see here that the gate takes a little bit of delay to then toggle 
the, uh, between the on and off states. So when we go from the off state to the on state, we would have the same kind of delay. And that delay is influenced by the capacitance here on that load. So that's really important because that's what gives you this ramp type of function on the secondary rail when that gate turns on or off. And that's something that's really characteristic of power sequencers. In some power sequencers, this gate, if it's based on this kind of gate toggling function, might be built into the chip itself. And essentially what it would do is that it would just pass the secondary rail directly through to an output pin rather than using a gate pin with an external FET. So now let's take a look at a different type of power sequencer. So some power sequencers will actually toggle the enable pins on other integrated circuits in order to turn them on. And it will do that in a specific sequence. So one example of a component that will do that is the LTC2928. So here, if I just look in the data sheet for this part, we can see how this device works. So if I zoom in on the application circuit, you can see here that the 2928 is monitoring the voltage output from a series of other regulators. You can actually have a case where one of these regulators, so like the LTM4600, is powering one of the downstream regulators, so the LTC3414. Now what's happening here is once the regulator connected to V1 powers up, it then waits a little bit and then it turns on the second regulator in the series. Then it turns on the third regulator and then eventually the fourth regulator and it goes through that specific sequence. Here in this sequencing graph, when we have our on signal toggled high, it then starts the startup sequence and the startup sequence will toggle the first regulator up to its output and then the second and the third and so on. Now, if we wanna shut down these regulators, we just toggle this on pin to the low state, and then that will go into a shutdown sequence. And so you can, you can see that here on the right side of the graph. Once we go to the shutdown sequence, we have regulator four turning off, then three, then two, then one. So it goes into the reverse type of sequence. This whole time, it's monitoring the voltage output from these regulators, and then based on that monitoring, it then toggles these enable pins from high to low in order to turn off all of the regulators that are upstream here connected to this 12 volt rail. Now that's one of the important things about using this type of component. If you want to use this type of power sequencer, you have to use it with other regulators that have enable pins on them. And that's the only way you can use this. Now here, if I zoom into this part of the circuit, you'll notice here that on is drawn as another signal. So meaning it could come from some other component in your system, but you don't have to do it like that. In fact, this on signal could come from your 12 volt rail. You may just need to step down that 12 volts to a lower voltage level with a voltage divider. And then if you wanted to delay the rise time on that signal that's going into the on pin coming from your 12 volt rail, you could then just add a capacitor. That capacitor is then gonna slow down that edge rate. So it allows this 12 volt rail to settle once it powers on, and then it will go through the startup sequence to power on all of these downstream rails. Now there's another way to do power sequencing that doesn't actually involve power sequencing ICs and that can involve the use of a comparator. So let's just suppose for example, we have a rail and this rail is coming into a comparator and that comparator has some hysteresis and then we have some VREF. And then of course we have this going to ground and then this going to V, we'll call it VS, some supply voltage. What we can do is we can have the hysteresis allow us to have turn on and turn off points for this comparator. And then this can go out to enable pins on different regulators. And so this would allow us to toggle on certain regulators at different times. And essentially what it's doing is it's toggling all of these regulators on based on the output from this comparator. So once your VIN passes a certain threshold, it can then toggle on the other regulators. And then this VIN would also touch these other regulators. So it allows you some control of when those regulators turn on. Now, if you wanted to have some other regulator that's maybe downstream from one of these, then that downstream regulator could also have its own comparator circuit that then toggles it on when the output from, let's say, regulator number one rises above a certain value. So this is another form of power sequencing that's not really time-based. It's more based on when input voltages cross some threshold. 
And once they cross some threshold, it then allows you to toggle on the next regulator in the series. With hysteresis in this comparator, what it's going to do is it's probably going to toggle on at, for example, some higher voltage, let's say 4.5 volts. But in the falling edge, when V in is dropping and then the system is shutting down, we could have our off threshold be a bit lower, let's say 3.5 volts. So we could have, let's say one volt of hysteresis in this uh, comparator. If we have that case, then when this V in is falling, it's then going to sequence these off in a certain way as well. And it's going to cause all of the downstream comparator circuits to then also toggle off. So this is another way to do power sequencing. And like I said, it's not time-based, it's actually based on when V in rises above or below some threshold levels. And that gives you a different way to sequence up your regulators, especially if you have a stream of regulators connected to each other in this kind of power tree topology. Now, just like we saw with the analog devices component that we were looking at on screen, this also relies on your downstream regulators having enable pins. So if there are no enable pins on those regulators, you can't use those regulators in this type of topology. So this should really underscore the value of using regulators that have those enable pins really regardless of whether or not you're doing power sequencing. If you're doing power sequencing or you just need to turn off certain portions of your system, you can take advantage of those enable pins on your power regulators. Thanks for watching this video, everybody. The next time you wanna find a power sequencer IC, just head over to Octopart. You can search by part name, by manufacturer, by part number, by package, and a whole bunch of other parameters. Make sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, leave your comments and questions in the comment section. And of course, don't forget to call your fabricator, folks.